Hello and welcome to Ophthalmcast, the audio podcast channel dedicated to ophthalmology. We are a team at Ophthalmcast who strive to provide you audio talks on ophthalmology, which are more practical and easily understandable, targeted at students and residents alike. Today, we talk about the vitreous humor, invisible by design. The vitreous humor is a space occupier of the globe. Also, it is a part of the optical system. What makes it unique is the plasticity it has and still being completely transparent. Marvelous. Let's dwell deeper into this unique anatomical structure. When we talk about the general features of the vitreous humor, it is inert, transparent, colorless, jelly-like hydrophilic substance. The vitreous is limited anteriorly by the lens and ciliary body. Posteriorly, it is enveloped by the retina. It is the single largest connective tissue in the body. The vitreous humor occupies about two thirds of the globe volume, with a weight of approximately four grams, giving a volume of about four milliliters. Strangely, 99% of it is water. This is a very popular image seen in various books depicting the structure of an intact vitreous body. This eye is dissected out of a young child. As we go ahead in this video, you will realize why the young child part is important. The vitreous body is anatomically divided into three parts. The hyoid layer, cortical vitreous and the medullary vitreous. Their differences are both in location and histology. The hyaluronic vitreous, also known as the hyaluronic layer or membrane, is a condensation of the vitreous when it comes in contact with the neighboring structures. It is a pseudo membrane. The collagen fibers in this connective tissue lie parallel to the boundaries in this layer. The hyaluronic vitreous is divided into the anterior and posterior parts by the vitreous base. Anterior hyaluronic membrane is towards the anterior part of the globe and starts 1.5 mm anterior to the aura serrata. Over this membrane lies the lens. The lens lies in a depression in front of this membrane and the surrounding area of contact forms a condensed ligament. The space is called Berger space and the ligament is a hyaluronocapsular ligament of Berger. The Berger space is continuous with the Clockett's canal. The posterior hyaluronic membrane extends from the vitreous base to the optic disc and is in close contact with the internal limiting membrane of retina. This layer becomes evident on subhyaluronic hemorrhage or PVD, also known as posterior hyaluronic phase on PVD. Cortical vitreous is the peripheral zone of main mass with a width of approximately 100 microns. This zone contains condensed fibrillary vitreous, the main contents being type 2 collagen with hyaluronate, a mucopolysaccharide. This zone also has high viscosity, tensile strength and elasticity. Cortical vitreous is the metabolic center containing hyalocytes, the vitreous cells which synthesize mucopolysaccharides and have phagocytotic action. Microscopically, they are fusiform or stellate with periodic acid shift positive, containing numerous smooth endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. These cells also serve glial and fibrocyte function. Here you can see the hyalocytes. Medullary vitreous is the major central part. It is similar to cortical vitreous but is less fibrillary, contains more water and cell free. Medullary vitreous also houses the Clockett's canal. The Clockett's canal is a remnant of primary vitreous around hyaluronic artery with doubtful existence in adults. It runs from Berger space to optic disc and is 1 to 2 mm wide. 
vitreous condensation in the walls is prominent. The embryological remnant seen in this canal is Bergmeister's papillae, Mittendorf's dot, and persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. The vitreous is strongly attached to the peripheral structures at four places. Aura serrata, the vitreous base, the optic disc, posterior capsule of lens, and foveal region. As I said, aura serrata, the optic disc, posterior capsule of lens, and foveal region. The vitreous base is a 4 mm wide zone overlying the aura serrata. It is a site of the firmest attachment. It covers 2 mm of the pars plana and also some area of the retina. 2 mm temporally and 3 mm nasally to be precise. If you imagine, it is a triangular structure with the base at the aura and the apex directed to the center of the globe. At the vitreous base, the collagen fibers of the vitreous interdigitate deep into the ILM of the retina and the pars plana. There are locations of focal gliosis and defect in the retina which make these adhesions strong. This attachment is so tough that this is retained for life and takes a large amount of force to separate. Now let's go into the biochemical structure of the vitreous. Vitreous essentially contains three main components, water, collagen and hyaluronic acid. 99% of the vitreous humor is formed by water. The entire water content is replenished and renewed every 15 to 20 minutes and is highly influenced by the systemic circulation. Going into the macromolecules, we start with the collagen. The vitreous collagen is insoluble. The type 2 is the largest component being 90% of collagen, followed by 1, 5, 9 and 11. Type 4, which is specific to basement membrane, is absent in vitreous but seen in situations of posterior vitreous detachment. Vitreous collagen is affected by systemic collagen disorders, affecting the collagen types 1, 2, 5, 9 and 11 like Stickler syndrome. The third major component is the hyaluronic acid. This molecule coils on itself and has high viscosity. Hyaluronic acid can absorb water like a sponge and is negatively charged. These mucopolysaccharides are produced by the hyalocytes. Some forms of albumins are also found in the vitreous humor. Sugars in various forms, ascorbic acid and a variety of amino acids are also seen in the vitreous humor. The electrolytes, although less in quantity, play a vital role of electrical and osmotic homeostasis. The most and only metabolically active part of vitreous are the hyalocytes, which form the hyaluronic acid. Physiochemically speaking, the vitreous humor is unique. The refractive index being 1.3349 with 90% light transmission. It is highly plastic, meaning it can take the shape of the container. It is also a viscoelastic substance due to the presence of hyaluronic acid. The interaction between the hyaluronic acid and collagen gives it stability as a gel. The vitreous humor undergoes expansion and contraction based on the sodium concentration which regulates the water content by osmosis. Other solutes are unable to exert this effect due to the selective permeability into the vitreous humor. This property is utilized to lower IOP by the use of systemic mannitol. There also exists a blood vitreous barrier which is resultant of the tight junctions of ILM, basal lamina of the ILM and the tightly packed cortical vitreous. The vitreous humor undergoes age-related changes. With advancing age, the collagen tends to lose the crosslinks 
and the hyaluronic acid increases. This makes the vitreous absorb more water, making the vitreous lose the gel stability. The vitreous becomes more liquid with clumping of collagen fibers. These clumps are sometimes presented as floaters by the patient. Gradually, the unstable gel also gets separated from its posterior attachments. This degenerative process is known as posterior vitreous detachment, PVD in short. PVD is a senile phenomenon happening at an earlier age in some population. Photopsia is seen particularly with the Weiss ring. The Weiss ring is a circular condensed vitreous around the optic disc which becomes apparent to the patient as a large floater. The liquefied vitreous also may lead to retinal detachment by flowing behind retinal defects. An anterior or basal detachment is seen in cases of trauma. Here you can see the progression of the PVD. PVD does not require any treatment per se. Reassurance is all that is required for the patient. However, some centers report good results with the laser therapy for floaters. There are other forms of vitreous opacities. The developmental remnants in the Clockett's canal can present as opacities. The other established degenerative conditions are asteroid hyalosis, synchysis scintillance, and amyloid degeneration. Asteroid hyalosis is commonly seen in elderly and diabetics, commonly unilateral and asymptomatic. There are calcium-containing crystals floating in the vitreous. The requirement of intervention arises only in cases of visual impairment. Synchysis scintillans are cholesterol crystals in the vitreous. They can also be seen in anterior chamber occasionally. They appear as multicolored glittering particles which move with gravity. These substances move with the liquefied vitreous. Amyloid degeneration is a systemic inherited disease which leads to deposition of amyloid in collagen containing tissues. Persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous or PHPV or PPHV is a developmental error. There is a failure of primary vitreous to regress. They can be of two types, anterior or posterior depending on the origin and location of the remnants. PPHV is one of the cause of leukocoria at birth. It is associated with cataract, glaucoma, microophthalmos and hemorrhages. Prognosis is poor in such cases. Vitreous humor also causes some problems while being detached. It might happen that the cortical vitreous becomes exceedingly adherent to the retina, may be due to cellular proliferation as a result of diabetes or any other similar proliferative condition. In such cases, the vitreous forms a band causing a traction on the macula. Such traction can cause disruption of the retinal anatomy compromising vision. These bands are commonly seen in epiretinal membrane, retinopathy of prematurity, post-inflammatory conditions, post-hemorrhage or diabetes. Here ends our short talk about the vitreous humor. Kindly keep us posted about your feedback, suggestions and comments. Let us know your feedback on this episode at offthecast at the rate gmail.com. You can subscribe to us on all leading podcast players and do visit our website www.offthecast.com for further updates. These audios are in no way a replacement to your standard textbooks. We strive to be factually correct but to err is human. Keep us posted if you disagree with anything that has been said in these recordings. We would be happy to make amendments with due credits. Thank you and happy learning.